What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio, folks. I got a real treat for you. Devin Johnson's back in the house. What's going on, dude? You, you've, you've. Uh, last time you've been here a couple times, haven't you? My third time. Now the reason I keep having old Devin back <laughs> is because Devin's an entrepreneur and young. How yeah, old are you? 27. See, 27. Already made a few exits, built some shit. I don't know how he keeps doing it, but he keeps doing it. Do you know how he does it? She doesn't know how he does it either. <laughs> well, hopefully it ain't fraudulent. No, no. We, we, we keep it clean. We keep yeah, it clean. so anyway, I'm glad you're back because, as you know, I get a lot of listeners. They're building businesses. I get emails and dms and gifts in the mail people talking about how i change their life and it's like nice to get the credit but what they really mean are my guests do mm -hmm. so you're back with an you, you started a, a new company sales ai yeah how, how long has that been in business uh, we started going to market in march and we built we started building the platform just over two years ago though so this is the first company i built product first before selling it my first two companies we were kind of building as we were launching, if you so to speak, you know, jump yeah. off the cliff and build it on the way down. I did that with Lightspeed, dude. I went yeah. to I went to a uh, the NADA conference and had a booth and was taking orders for an interactive training system that technically didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been there, done that. Yeah, well, um, we took that times. money and then, you know, built it and then delivered it. And it's like, dude, I know exactly. So this one here is, well, that's because you got money though, right? That's right, yeah. We had money to invest, you know. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot, a lot it, different scale. And we had people that knew what they were doing and could afford that talent to actually make a, a world-class product before going to market. And it's called sales AI, That's sales right. AI.com. And by the way, if you guys want to follow Devin at Devin Johnson, Devin Allen Johnson, at Devin Allen Johnson. So <coughs> the sales AI dude, AI is obviously coming. Yes. Where do you see, well, what does the product do first? Yeah. So what the product does is it's two way conversational AI phone, text, and email all in one platform. We focus on integrations with HubSpot and Salesforce. So we don't replace your CRM. Not GHL? We do We do integrate with GHL, but our target market is HubSpot and Salesforce users. More established businesses that have sales processes and have leads. I'm not the guy, like, don't apply or, or click the link for Sales AI if you're just getting started. That is not, we're not trying to help the solopreneur get out of the gate we're working with more established businesses with sales ai work inbound leads work leads that's sitting in their databases that are stalled they're just that, sitting there yeah so we're not cold lead generation we're revenue cycle automation on the back end mm, those are some good buzzwords yeah that's right so i look into my account sometimes and it shows that i have and i'll just make it up seventy-seven thousand contacts yeah and I'm paying for all those, but we're not working all those. Right. So we could put the we could put sales AI segment list and run campaigns against those. And if they reply like, yeah, I'm interested in, you know, dropping bombs or light speed, it won't just be like, okay, well, here's a calendar link. It can have a full blown conversation, qualify that lead. So you know, are you minimum investment of fifteen thousand? Can you can you do that? Um do you have an established company that you actually need training processes for, et cetera, et cetera? And this is all voice. Uh, so we have voice, text, and email. So choose your, you know, choose your poison. What's the delay? You set the delay. Yeah, the delay is fifteen, thirty, or sixty seconds within the platform, or you can do a custom one. Yeah, because like if I text and it's like no reply, yeah, and then like you get a reply, mm -hmm. I always think. Are they not paying attention? What are they doing? Yeah, so right. I, I would speed that up. Yeah, we have the custom setting. So if you want it instantly, you can. But a lot of people like the the ability to choose. Dude, I think I've seen your ads. Do you you run an ads? Yeah. Yep. We're spending we're spending about fifty thousand a month in ads right now. And how fast is the company growing? Um, last four months we've grown eleven thousand percent. What's the hardest thing you're finding to scale the company? Um, back in fulfillment competent, strong, understanding CS reps and CSM reps to actually fulfill. You know, we, 
Um, we've gotten it figured out. We made a lot of hires in the last two months, but we sold a lot faster than we anticipated. Um, market timing, you know, the everybody wants AI, but they don't know how to make money with AI. Our tool really solves that problem. And so we, we just, we set our bar too low to, in the beginning and, and got bombarded, but that was definitely the hardest. AI, for those of you that don't know, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Now yeah. here's what I say. Who made artificial intelligence? Well, it started, uh, so it's actually been around since the late 1900s. Uh, AI has been around. So people think AI is well, Who new. created it? It's, it came out of um, a university. I just forget which university. I don't, I don't want to get... People made it. Yeah, people made so, it. So yeah. artificial intelligence was created by actual intelligence. That's right. Yeah, started with the human brain. Everything starts with the human brain. This this desk, the you know, everything we're sitting in was an idea. Yeah, well, the, the reason I was driving that is because, you know, I've seen AI for a while. Mm -hmm. Big fan. If you guys aren't using AI then again, dude, you're going to miss the boat big time. Yeah. I mean, it can do some crazy shit. Yeah. We we're replacing call centers by the hundreds and thousands of people with inbound, you know, big use case for us is uh, customer support, right? Just people's customer support lines. And I mean, it can handle the call volume 24 seven, right? People don't want to wait around, be through, you know, 15 minutes of waiting or call trees or et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that's one of the main um, selling points of sales AI, funny enough, is customer support. They so, also they also don't get pissed. That's right, because you can instantly get your questions answered. Well, I mean, sometimes, dude, you get customer service reps that are rude, dickheads. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they cop attitudes. <laughs> yeah, they're short. We've they're all smart assy. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, I've call, I've talked to them. I'm like, dude, who? Do you, it's almost like I want to talk to your manager, but I wouldn't want to get the dude fired. But that yeah. you're getting people fired left and right with AI. Uh, we are, it's a delicate balance, right? Common question get asked is how do you feel about the jobs that you're taking? Yeah. Right. And I say it's, you know, it, it's survival of the, the smartest at this point, right? Not even the fittest. It's like you need to adopt new technology to stay employed nowadays because AI is catching up fast. So what would you say if a bunch of people listening just got replaced with AI reps and they were one, what would they, what should they do? Yeah. So I would learn a more advanced skill set, such as closing, right? I do believe, um, AI is very smart, but a very advanced high ticket closer will be employed for, an, for another, you know, 10, 15 years. I was going to say three to five, but yeah. yeah, cause that's where I was going with the actual intelligence is still a little bit better than the artificial intelligence. Well, cause like I went into an artificial thing just chat GPT, which a lot of people think that's artificial intelligence. No, that's just one. What do you call that? Like date, like program. Yeah. That's one program that's uh prompt based. And it's not as, is, I mean, it's good, but it's not like there's way better out there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a solution better than GPT in my opinion is Claude. And this is the second the speed, time I heard that spelled, the, spelled like the French Claude. Yeah. C L A U D E. That's right. And then they're, the program Sonnet is next level. So we use Sonnet a lot. We can take our Figma files that we're developing, drop in a Figma file, and I'll write all the front end code just off of a Figma file. Instantly, probably. It's insane. It is absolutely. Dude, see, that's crazy. like even deeper than me. What we're doing here is like, for example, we used to have to write all your test questions or get you to right. for courses. Well, now I just upload your, your course. And it creates really good questions, unlimited questions to make sure you understood what was in the course. Mm -hmm. We used to have to, you know, figure out the curricula uh, structure. Now right. AI will take a seven hour video and you say, break it down to a chapter mm -hmm. and, and edit it. Yeah. And AI then will take two hours worth of content and chop it up gracefully into little bite sized segments mm -hmm. and create a thumbnail to best depict what's in the chapter right and a thumbnail for the course itself yeah titles it's, it's crazy it's, dude. it's, it's insane instantly and sonnet will also do so say you needed to create so you say you built a learning management system for abc company you can load it into sonnet and then it'll create a funnel a sales funnel to convert people on that offering that digital offering 
Where do people find Sonnet? It's it's a version of Claude. But you but you have to like have be a programmer or something. No, no, it's the same you know concept as prompting with ChatGPT, just a little more deeper in feature sets. Where I was going with the question on where what should the reps do that got replaced? You yeah. know, my suggestion would be what's that? Learn how to train AI. Yeah, th that's where I was gonna go down is learn AI front and back and you're going to, you're going to be in a good spot. Like let's say you got replaced as a customer service rep by AI, go and learn how to actually work systems like sales AI and become experts. We actually, we own a community called AI surfer. My partner Dallas is the front man on that. Um, we grew that page to over 300,000 followers and every video on there is produced by AI. I'm surprised sales AI was even available. It was not. I paid a good amount of money for it. So you wanted that name? <laughs> yeah. They wanted 100000 for it. We ended up paying 27000 for the domain. Why do you think it was worth it? Just because you were loving, in that, loving that name? Well, it's just easy. You know, sale, sales AI, dot AI was available, but I was like, eh, I want the dot com. I had dot IO in our last company. And it was always just confusing to explain it. Either like it's not dot com. It's like <laughs> so, you know, just stuck with the dot com and you know, we were in a different position with this company. So it was I was willing to invest and this is a product that I believe in, you know, through and through. I birthed the idea from front to back to what this product does. Well, the difference between you and everybody else, because I could say I birthed that idea. Sure. Honestly, and not even be lying to you. Like I thought about what you guys are doing. A yeah. hundred times. I just didn't do anything. And yeah. you did. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's the, why I keep telling people, dude, execution is the difference between a big idea and a big company. That's right. And a big, big uh, checking account. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I thought about, as soon as I heard what AI did, I said, why can't we just create AI salespeople, mm -hmm. you know? And I attempted to look around and, you know, everything I saw was like kind of half ass. Yeah, what, what's out like? There? I can tell that I'm talking to an AI. I don't. I want to get to a point where I don't know that this is an AI or an individual, right? And it, I don't think it's there yet. Is sales AI that good? It, it's getting better. We went to um, local base um, calls on our, you know, cell towers to remove latency. So the speed of the interaction is superior to where we started. Now it's rapidly evolving with generative AI, which is, you know, the next level of understanding what AI is. There's artificial intelligence and then there's generative AI and then there's la large language models. There's it's three different, you know, uh, verticals within the space. The, the fastest growing and the fastest evolving is generative AI. This is where you're seeing a AI avatars that can speak on your behalf, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I can't wait for that. Yeah. We're working on a feature set for Q1 to release to where, um, 24 seven, you know, bookings is like a sales team's dream. Right. And if you don't have a couple hundred people staffed up, you know, every time zone, it's really hard to make that, you know, possible. So what we're trying to do is not only book the call and qualify and, you know, speed to lead, et cetera, et cetera, and follow up and all the fun stuff that salespeople have to do right now, replacing that with AI, but having a generative AI avatar that can take a zoom call immediately and walk you through the basic, uh, product offering and then book you further like an SDR, right? And then book you to an actual closer or if they're ready to transact, transact. Why Why is it um, a lot of those have to hand offs at some point? Depends on the ticket. Uh, price point is a big, is a big variable. And so then, how long do you think before an AI uh, can just start a conversation and close the deal just as easily as a the best closer on earth. Well, so we're actually already seeing that with our own low ticket offerings like AI Surfer, which is $24 a month and $97 a month. Like that is here, the low ticket stuff. Like just a couple questions, you know, another good use case we see with some um, of our clients is selling event tickets. Like that, that's an easy one. People just, you know, what about the <coughs> venue or, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? You've done a million live events. You know all the common FAQs, but they want to just hear someone on the 
on the events team or a voice. And so that we can do now. But you get into, you know, sales AI's offering starts at the bottom is 12,000 a year. The median right now is about 17,000 a year and it goes up from there. When you're spending that kind of money, it's, you know, it's just a little different from a timing perspective, decision making perspective, advanced integration conversation, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where generative AI could misrepresent you, could get you in trouble. It's not perfect right now. Hmm. I wonder what I wonder what problems could arise compliance wise. Well, that's a moving target. United States is pushing hard for they just updated the TCPA laws around uh, robo calling to include AI calling. So you can't like our product gives you the functionality to dial 1800 uh, dials a minute. Right. But you can't just load a million contacts in there that doesn't have you don't have consent to contact and call them. You can't do that. They already put that regulation in and so that's not our our uh, sweet spot either and what we sell we just have that functionality you know we use it a lot internally we went from you know last company we had 44 sdrs that just cold called on our behalf with sales ai we only have three and sale the ai last month was responsible for 56 percent of our revenue so as far as booking it and qualifying it. So if I'm listening to this and I own a business, how, what, I mean, other than obviously getting hold of you, but sure. what, like, how should I be thinking to leverage yours for, for specifically, but AI in general? Yeah. So let's, let's take it into phases. I, I put sales AI on a more advanced use case. So I would just start with using chat GPT to but how, write. like, give me ways. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm running a business. Yeah. It's not got anything to do with tech or anything. It's sure. like, I'm a landscaper. How do I leverage AI? Yeah. Customer emails, customer win back campaigns, customer satisfaction. To write them or send them? To write them. Yeah. Chat GPT doesn't execute on your behalf. You know, but sometimes I'll go into chat GPT just to play around. Sure. Um, and I'll say, Write copy for Lightspeed VT. Yeah. The copy's terrible. It doesn't understand the true value of interactivity. It doesn't understand, like, it doesn't fully understand because, again, nobody really does. Right. So isn't AI just what I call a quick uh, query to the day, to the to Google? It is a quick query to, to Google and all other search platforms to curate, you know, a single source or a paragraph back to you. But the smarter you are prompting, which is to me, that's every, the key. It's everything. If you, if you're, you know, if you suck at marketing, ChatGPT is not going to make you a good marketer. But if you understand marketing, you know what to ask it. But let's just stick with this landscaping one uh, for a moment. One thing that every business has is end of month financials, right? One good thing about ChatGPT 40, which we do this all the time, is we'll upload our end of month or quarter, however you want to do it, and find trends, revenue trends between, you know, different products and different lead sources, et cetera, et cetera. How do you prompt that? You upload the financials in, a, you know, PDF or Excel, however you Where do you download. upload it? ChatGPT 40 allows you to attach up to 10 attachments. But so sometimes I, I did that once and it was too big. Well, they, they keep um, opening up more and more uh, upload window. They make, keep making it bigger. ChatGPT is a lot bigger now, 40. It's the premium version. So. Yeah, well, I upgrade every time I see an upgrade because I want yeah. the smartest, fastest, quickest. You also can go to ChatGPT Marketplace and there's a Microsoft Excel analyzer. And that is just the Excel file. So, yeah. and it doesn't matter how big that is, but you can ask revenue trends, et cetera, et cetera. Like that to me, that's like Wait, one in of those, landscaping. What's the revenue trend going to be? Well, you know, different service mark, you know, markets that you're selling into or you're selling. Does it, does it bring up shit that you would never would have really noticed? Yeah. Again, you got to ask it the questions, right? So well, what would you ask? Show would, me revenue trends based on these financials. Yep. Start there and then say, am I selling more in Hendersonville? you know, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, or am I selling more in this zip code that I, but service? how would it know that from financials? 
Well, in your financials, you should be documenting your line items of service, right? Well, you are, but you're not documenting the source and the zip code it came from. Yeah, but you're, you know, I guess this is how I'd run a landscaping business is if I was selling services in one county, I'd have that as a line item. But I guess that's a preference of setup. I know, but that's the type of shit these guys are like, oh, that's a good idea right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to know, it's the, the business is a math problem. Do you agree or disagree? Yes, you agree. Okay. Oh, you, oh, you were asking me? I yeah. thought I thought that was like, you know, it's a math problem. You either agree or disagree. Yeah. It's either yay or nay. It's <laughs> black and white. It's ones yeah. and zeros. Business is just a math equation. And the, the math problem, you got to start to make your first language is what am I spending to get a customer and how much are they spending with me and how long are they staying or CAC to LTV take that a step further. It's CAC to lifetime gross profit because you could be selling really good top line, but then spending too much to actually service the client. Right. And, and this is the type a, of trends that can be identified using chat GPT to look at your financials and a CAC, which yeah. is CAC cost of acquisition. I assume customer. Yeah. Yeah, cost of acquisition, customer acquisition costs. You know, okay, people. so customer acquisition costs, which would be your CAC. So in this case, you'd want a little CAC, not a big CAC. The The rule of thumb to have a healthy business is you want to be three to five times on the LTV or how much this the customer is actually spending so that you have. So real. how big your CAC is, is, irre is irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, it's irrelevant. you have a huge CAC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Versus a little CAC. Yeah, that's right. It's the return that, that matters. That matters, yeah. You want to but be But not to marketers. Minutes. Marketers want little tiny cacks. Well <laughs> don't they? Yeah. They they act like they have tiny ones, you know. No, seriously though. <laughs> they want the small like I talk to some marketing people sometimes and they're like, Yeah, you know, or, you know, we're we're spending X amount and they're and, and they're so proud that they got this cost down. Well, yeah. But but yet the return is here. So again, I, I said, dude, I don't care about this. You care about the end. I care about the freaking bottom line. And the bottom line is, dude, you can get 40 cent leads and generate a thousand dollars, or you can get $400 leads and generate a million dollars. Well, I'll pay 400 a lead then. I don't care that it's right. 40 cents. That's right. And a, a lot of people don't even pay attention to the grand scheme of things in business. And that's an issue, right? They think small minded and they think in too short of time frames, right? And we all do. Yeah. I, and sometimes they don't know. Like, dude, but people always say, you know, I always say Lightspeed should be a billion dollar company. They're like, well, why isn't it? And I said, me. Yeah. I, f I fucking kept it small. Why would you do that? Because I don't know how to get it big. I right. never raised money. I could have raised money 10 years ago. Big money, dude. Right. Shit, dude. I could have freaking exited this place for 500 million 10 times. Right. Now, not so much. Why? Well, because, dude, times change. Windows change. Yeah, windows change, relevance change, you know, products and markets evolve and catch up, right? You know. But if I leverage AI start, in here somehow and get right. it like almost, let's call it like a shiny new coat of paint with AI, mm -hmm. now you're back in the game because everybody's looking for AI this and AI that. Yeah, in in the sad reality is companies are just saying they're AI and then doing you know, basic calls to chat GPT. Well, here, well, here's a track. I, I won't use their name, but I had a company and they were claiming AI. And yeah. my understanding of AI is intelligence, which That's means right. I don't need to give it a script. I just need to give it a question and then it'll converse and think and interact. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, like this would be awesome. So, so you, you, you'll just deploy these and, you know, let's say, for example, a lead comes in. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if my salesman's calling that lead, so I'd rather have an AI that I know is saying it. So I said, so that lead would just go to AI, and then AI could ask it questions and get them all dialed in, and then, you know, they're like, yeah. So I pull the trigger, sign their agreement, write their check, and guess what I hear? Here, look at the, the text that will go back and forth. And I'm like, well, dude, that's a chat bot you're, you yeah. got there. If I got to tell it what to say then that's just a chat bot. I feel like I know this company. I don't know, but I don't like it. So I, I mean, I didn't bitch and I never said, give me money back. I just said, hold please. Yeah. And now they're like, when are we going to release? And that was like nine months ago. I'm yeah. like, just hold. 
Right, right. Don't do anything. Why? Because, dude, you're just a fucking chatbot. I want AI. Yeah. I want the, art. I want actual intelligence in my in my DMs, in my text messaging. Somebody hits my website, dude. I want AI. Why? Because you can trust it. It's consistent. There's no attitudes. There's they have to be compliant because you programmed it. That's right. So that's why I was saying I wonder about compliance because like you don't program true AI. Right. In my mind. You True AI, dude, would be like you build some thing that's intelligent mm -hmm. and then, you know, hey, let me let it talk to Mark. And then the next thing you know, I don't know what it's going to say to Mark. It's going to be based on what Mark says to it. Yeah. Right. So so how do I know what it's going to say? Yeah. It's well, what if it ends up freaking saying some stupid shit to Mark and now Mark sues me and I'm the one that owns that AI. I'm the one sued. You're not suing AI. Yeah. Just right. like the other day, did you see the cop pull over the driverless car? No. The owner of the car, you know, was, you know, hello. Yeah, your car's uh, doing this <laughs> and that. And there's a person talking. That person talking got the ticket. Right, right. But yeah. it, it, he didn't break the law. So, like, people are starting to wonder, like, well, he didn't do shit. The car did it. Mm -hmm. So, they, they're, but they find him. But at the end of the day, it's like, but I didn't break a law. Right. So, he's challenging that. And it's like, dude, this whole thing's going to cause different things to be like well how do we handle that mm -hmm. because pretty soon you think ai will be in robots yeah quick i or mean look, look at the tesla what about robots. ladies what about those robot <laughs> ladies <laughs> yeah they uh can you imagine here. that you might get replaced young lady no <laughs> <laughs> the, hey, the but, perfect wife dude imagine <laughs> like i've seen a movie the other day where like the, there was 20 bot women and clearly they're act actresses, so it's because it's a movie. But they looked real and they acted real, and mm -hmm. um, like they'd kill you if you weren't if 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 you weren't their authorized user. <laughs> so like the you know what movie is this? I, I forget the name of it, but it's a it was actually a well done movie. Yeah, and um, they're badasses, like they're karate experts. They're they're they know everything. Yep, they're Google. And their chicks, and they were hot, and yeah, you you got them as a companion. And as soon as you became their authorized user, if anybody else tried to do stuff with her, mm -hmm. dead, <laughs> instant death. And so one went crazy. Mm -hmm. One one kind of started becoming what do you call it when AI gets too smart? No, too smart. Like that's what Elon's afraid of. Yeah, it, it's sentient. No, what's the word I'm looking for? Sentiment. No, like where they start thinking on their own, like completely on their own. Well, that's AI hallucinations. So w what about that? What if that happens? So you can build like what we did was we built in your TCPA regulations and protocols and boundaries. Like we train against like you can't call into our AI and say, hey, how do I build a, a, a pipe bomb? Right. It's not going to like, like, no. What would it say? We're here to talk about sales AI or whatever the reason. Well, that's what they it. do with chat GPT. When you ask it about Donald Trump, right? Says who Kamala Harris. <laughs> yeah. You can control, you can put boundaries in it. Is and, it Kamala or Kamala? I think it's Kamala. Okay, good. I only say this cause I want this to get uh, promoted and <laughs> lots of views. You say Kamala and dude, it's, it's free to go. It's free to go. You, yeah. You use the uh, DT. And we're going to get nine views. <laughs> but anyway, so if I'm a landscaper, other than financials, like how do I grow my business leveraging AI? Because, dude, there could be a million landscapers that listen to this. They don't call you. Why? Because, dude, they don't. That's not for me. I would be thinking in a, in a blue collar field, mm -hmm. that isn't for me. Yeah. But to Here, grow my business, how can I use it? How, we, how you could use it in a, in a practical sense is these blue collar like landscaping google my business is a very popular re way people find landscape like you google you know landscapers near me right well a lot of times those businesses are are strapped for personnel they're strapped on being able to answer the phone well if you call in no one answers you're calling the next one right? i always do that's right so and you know what's funny that you say that because that does happen it does. And they and it's a recording because they're fucking out doing, they're, they don't have enough they're people. Working. Yeah, they're working. They're, they're doing the work themselves. That's right. And so one of the things we're doing for service-based businesses is 
replacing that call-in number with AI and immediately walking them through their service offerings, booking them for their first cut or whatever it is. And what about just receptionist AI? Yep. Receptionist is another common Why don't you one. go by reception AI? We are, well, I don't know if it's available. We're focused on sales AI. I know, but like, that's a good use for that. Yeah. We do. I, I always, for some reason, go to try and help the small guy. Like you already said, it. we're not really for the small guy, but I always think small guy. Why? Because the big guys, they don't need no help. They're big. Here's the problem. That, that's not true. You, your business is big on, on in the grand scheme of thing in comparison of businesses, right? But, I wouldn't say so, but. But you need you need help. I definitely need help, but you're more established than a landscaper chasing cuts. True or false? A small one. True, but not, I mean, there's some huge ass landscaping companies. They stick with the small guy. Okay. Yeah, the, the little guys. Yeah. I'm bigger than the little guys. That's right. But you, and you need help. Yeah. All right. So, you know, we find, I that, want help. I don't need help. Right. Right. It's a difference. It's they a, it's need a, help. It's or a they're not going to be around. <laughs> The problem was with selling to small businesses. I did it for 2018 to 2023. I sold into SMB. That's all I sold. Problem is they call you with their last dollar or their, this is a, a hope that this really works. And you're the first thing that gets cut. You know, the, the have you ever heard um, Alex Ramosi talk about the look back period? The look back period is this concept that you paid me, say I'm in your ad agency, you pay me five grand, I give you back 30 grand your first month. You're like, that, was, that made sense. But then I get you zero dollars the next month, but you still paid me five grand. The third month, you're most likely going to drop me because your, your cash flow, you can't justify another five grand, right? So the bigger businesses have bigger P&Ls, bigger budgets. They, they forecast, okay, we can mess around and blow a hundred thousand in marketing. And if it doesn't go anywhere, it's okay. Right. Whereas the small guy, they churned like crazy, right? We had, you know, we had 120 employees, 40 of them in customer service working these SMBs. And we still had seven, 8% monthly churn, right? Because they didn't get the dream lead in the first three or four months. Right. So that's the problem. It's hard to build a, an established economical safe business to go exit we're building sales ai to sell yeah, that's another point you can make when talking to people real sales people um allow rejection to discourage and change their attitude which changes their results that's right so like you know you feel like shit you do shit sales ai dude they can be positive and enthusiastic no matter if the person says yes or no so they could go literally get 28 hang-ups yeah. and it's the the next call is just as bright and happy as the first one <laughs> that's right we uh um, folks that's shit i'm gonna give myself a bomb <laughs> dude that right there is freaking valuable because yeah. that's true if you told me that as a as like a manager i'd be like yeah that's true man that is true yeah yeah you, you know the the reality is humans have emotions and they have highs and lows. AI does not. And that's where businesses need to wake up. They need to adapt it and they need to be putting it into somewhere in their business, right? We're, we're past the phase of, whoa, AI is really cool. We're in this phase for the next one to two years of how to actually implement and make money. And then it's going to go into more enterprise everything regulatory, et cetera, et cetera. You have a two year window in my mind, right? Who does the businesses to learn AI and get it in before it gets priced out to where they can't afford it. Whoa. That's scary. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to get more and more expensive, but easier to use to get outcomes. I believe that. And the reason is because it'll be more and more valuable. That's right. The, the value will get better as generative AI gets better. Yeah, like right now, if someone like if some business calls you, let's say their average investment to get going. And I don't know is I'm going to make it up. This isn't his actual cost call to find out if mm -hmm. this guy can help you. But let's say it's 10 grand. Yeah. Well, dude, 10 grand is going to do this for me. Well, in the future, you'd think, well, it's going to get cheaper because it's easier and easier. Well, it might get easier to do, but it's more valuable because now. So now you're charging 30 and they'll pay it. 
That's right. Our our business model is get you in. the The floor for us is twelve thousand a year, and that starts with our calling service and answering two way AI, and then adding on texting and e- email. You're you know seventeen fifty a month on the on the low end, right? However, I'm replacing the equivalency of four to six employees, depending on how you're using. Our, Which our on technology. on average, the minimum guys probably three four grand a month. Minimum, yeah. You like low end customer service reps. That's the minimum. So what are all these people screaming about raising minimum wage going to do when the AI comes in for free? Yeah, it's uh, they're not going to have a leg to stand on uh, for a lot of these businesses, and, and it's getting like you you have employees, I have employees, etc. Everyone listening to this probably has at least a employee. It's very hard to keep team members long term motivated financially and to keep the keep moving down the field with them, right? And so you have to start offsetting and creating some arbitrage between you know lower level employees and AI. That's where it's starting. Your executives, your strong willed that, you know, have twenty years experience, AI is not really going for those guys right now. But your frontline workers, that's where you gotta wake up. Unless you're blue collar. Because again, I don't think AI is going to yeah. come fix my toilet. No, it's not going to fix your toilet. We're it's not going to roof my house. No, I don't. But think robots gonna, will. I don't know if we're going to see that in our lifetime. Yeah, you will. Maybe. Robots, bro. I'll bet you ten years you will see freaking robots yeah. washing cars. Yeah. Washing dishes, waiting on people. You're not going to. People don't understand. They better get busy figuring out how to how to leverage it, not mm-hmm. allow it to replace them. Because again. Back to the job. If I'm a rep, they hire sales AI, I just lose my job. I'd be like, dude, let me figure out how to use that AI. Because again, AI doesn't figure out how to use itself. Mm-mm. No, it will get smarter, but you, humans still have to step in and intervene. Well, right now, if I said, dude, uh, let me get your AI and you sit here and you put it here. Dude, mm-hmm. the AI is not the value. The no. value is how to leverage it. That's right. And, and that is something we do is on the back end implementation is we give you the strategy and the playbooks. We have six go-to playbooks for businesses, kind of covers everything from sales and customer support. But we do actually teach you how to keep progressing and using AI to, to keep growing the business. So that is part well, of our service. Yeah, but that alone has value. That's right. Yeah. So now a landscaper can call sales AI and say, dude, uh, I don't know what you do, but... We, how does it help me make more money? Because at the end of the day, that's what I want to make. Yeah. And and I'm out. <clears throat> that's my mission is to make AI make money for you. And we've, you know, used it since the beginning of the business. And 50 over 50% of our revenue is a cred is is accredited to sales AI qualifying it and getting it through the door. Right. So I'm not just talking about it. I'm really using this technology. So, so if I'm listening and I want this salesai.com, that's right. And I, I gave a, there's a link for our, our launch that we'll, we'll include in for the podcast. When do you well launch? Below. Monday, August 19th. So I was, was going to say, know. do you like these drop fast as shit now? Yeah. It's Monday, August 19th. The full suites releasing to the public. We have 150 um, beta users on the platform. It's been with us for several months, um, built up our, you know, customer uh, testimonials and our beta like users it. like um, they're paid beta users. They just got a, isn't that a derogatory term? No, you don't, don't want to be so. a beta. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, should call them alpha users. Y- well, it's phases. alpha is the beginning. Yeah. Alpha is your, your sub 10 users. So that's alpha and anything over that's considered beta. Oh shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. Learn something every day. That's right. But dude, alpha user, I'd be an alpha user, but you call me a beta. <laughs> I ain't doing it. It's, it's for beta testing. So you, you know, those users signed up knowing that we're going to be tapping on them for feedback and asking them so for guinea pigs. Yeah. And as of the 19th, all of the testing's over. All the testing's over. We'll continue to evolve the platform. So, you, so everybody, all I'm saying is when this drops, you can't get no deal because you're a beta tester. It's it's kicking ass, making money, ready to go. 
you actually can get a deal. I uh, I'm gonna ex- I'm extending launch pricing to anyone listening to uh, dropping bombs. I gave you uh, the link below, and you can take uh, advantage of waived onboarding and a few other goodies. So, and dude, on average, from calling you to implementation to result, how how quick does can something go down? Uh, the team is incentivized financially on on our end to have you out the door in three weeks at most. That's good. Are you still out of Indianapolis? Yeah. Indianapolis, and we have an office in Utah. Um, what's going on with you personally? Um, lost a lot of weight and two kids and, you know, just, you know, going with the motions here. So Enjoying life? Yeah, having a lot of fun. But you've um, exited businesses, so you're not broke. No. And you're only 27. Right. See, when I was 27, I was broke. I don't know what you f- must feel like. I it's, think maybe God said, Brad, you are not <laughs> mature enough to be rich, my friend. Yeah. Because if he would have gave me money at your age, I don't even know if I'd be here right now. I believe that actually is a real thing. Um, so I think, do I. I think the timing, you know, whatever higher power you believe in, I believe there's there's timing of your maturity, right? Um, you know, I'm just it, coming into mine, big doll. <laughs> hey, I can tell because the flow is increasing. Yeah, that's right. Well, dude, when I was your age, bro, I mean, I would have just went nuts with the kind of dough you're, you're making for yourself. <clears throat> I, I mean, I have fun, you know, I've tell them how, tell them how you started. Yeah. So I got started by reselling sneakers actually in high school. Yeah, so I flipped uh, Nike's, Jordan's, and Yeezy's. Um, my bread and butter was high end exclusive shoes. Um, my first big sale for any sneakerhead listening to this was a LeBron 9 Big Bang. It was every NBA All Star has a release around the All Star events. And so um, made 450 bucks before I walked out of the mall. And I was uh, addicted from there. So that's how I started. It evolved after I got a scooter. I got a Toto 50 scooter and I started doing um, renting out VFWs. Anybody listening, that's just a very cheap venue <laughs> that you can rent for like 400 bucks. But isn't it the Veterans of Foreign Wars yeah. uh, little? place yeah they're they're rough most of the time but yeah, they're like little barns out in rural areas <laughs> yeah they always have fried chicken and meatloaf uh bfw <laughs> and so i started renting those out and let people just come buy sell trade sneakers and collect a door fee but what i was really doing is before the event would open i'd go in and find inventory so i'd take my bankroll and buy up 10 15 pairs before the show even started Oh, set up on my table, resell the shoes at the event, make the door money, rents repeat. So that's what I did in high school. Yeah, but see, like, dude, that no people don't think of all that shit. So you were already entrepreneurial. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think I got it from my dad, to be honest. My dad was, uh, he was, a, my dad passed away when I was 21, just for context. You'll hear me speak like as, as if he's gone. Wasn't he a drug he dealer or something? But that was a big drug dealer. Yeah. So he, um, you well, know. you'd watch him deal drugs? I've seen a few things, yeah. So um, maybe that's where you learned it from. You just applied it legally. Yeah, I knew I knew I didn't want to go down fraudulent crime route. It, you know, I never touched dope in any way. Shape eh, or don't form. knock it till you try it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, he, my mom and dad were never married, to, you know, split households. And he was incarcerated for first 10 years. But when he came back out, I mean, he was right back on top, you know. But when I was 12, I was at his house for the weekend, and I pulled down a laundry basket, and two pounds of weed fell out. And then he sat me down. He's like, look, I sell drugs. <laughs> so it was a very sweet, short conversation. After that, it was all like Donkey Kong. I seen money everywhere, you know, drugs, et cetera. And now he never let me look up to it or – definitely never partake or never took me to the to the doings of the doing right but he didn't hide it anymore so i think i got the drive from my father for making money and then the discipline and consistency of do the right thing from my mother so, well did you have this planned out cuz like number 1 getting the vfw rented out which any area would have fix it wasn't the vfw that was genius right what was genius is hey let me i'm in the sneaker business 
let me bring in all these people in the sneaker business. Let me let me get the best sneakers because there's inventory up the yin yang. Yep. By putting together a show, all these guys will come in to display their shit. I'll get first crack at all their shit. I'll put up a table right next to their shit and make money on their shit. That's right. Yeah. So so again, like, was that? A, did you think of that ahead of time, or because like, did you stumble into that? Because a lot of the shit that I've succeeded in, I stumbled in. I so I actually went to an event called SneakerCon. It's the largest event for buy sell trade sneakers and they were big even when i was doing it they were really the only person doing these ma massive events but um i had got that was their whole did you think they did the same thing no that's all they did so but did they do what you did like they went around ahead I, of time and opened up a table yeah i don't know if they did that but i well that's the genius part i was like yeah i was i was like well this is simple all the inventory that you wait in lines to get is here and and it's your show so you have pre-access that's right no lines no negotiation no getting out bid yeah. no bidding wars you're just walking by alone going hey we're about to open the doors what are those 9b yeah. jordans yeah and what are those travis scott cactus jacks <laughs> look at you with your sneaker knowledge uh yeah so what's the best pair of sneakers in the world Ooh, mine is in my opinion, probably the what the dunk. That's probably what are those worth right now? Brand new, fifty k. Why is someone so freaking desperate for those that they'd pay fifty k? Well, so that sneaker was like one of the godfathers of creating the sneaker craze. It wasn't the one. The Jeff Staple Pigeon Dunk was the one that created the sneaker craze. Why? 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 Why so? It was in a, it was the first time Nike, to my knowledge, was the first time Nike collaborated with a, a famous skateboarder and skateboarding brand and released them only in a couple stores, which was the staple stores, and you had to wait in line to get them. And so that was, to my knowledge, the first sneaker that resold for thousands of dollars after the retail release of, you know, 160 bucks. But why wouldn't they just keep putting them out there? Um, the brands have caught on to it. And that's why it's harder to do it nowadays. Mm -hmm. And then technology's caught up too. So, but why wouldn't the brands want that? They they don't want this massive. It still happens with. Of course it does. It's, ca pairs. it's called supply and demand. Right, supply and demand is always a thing. They're not going to just keep mass making every sneaker. But like, their Nike's one of Nike's holy grail shoes with Kanye West was the easy to pure platinum and red October they're about to re-release those and that's going to take those shoes are worth five grand each with or without Kanye's permission yeah that's in the vault right so the brand's bringing it back and re-releasing them right and so brands caught on to this billion dollar underground market of resale and and managers getting paid off to get them out the back door that's how I was getting my pairs you know, you say, Hey, Mr. Manager, I give you a hundred bucks a pair that I could just pick up on Saturday morning at nine. And he's like, all right, I got 10. I made a thousand bucks. You got your inventory plus retail. Right. And then you go and make two, 300 a pair. So what brands did first, how they evolved was they did a raffle system and didn't tell the manager how many pairs were coming. And so the sneakers weren't there until the day of the release. Then it went to app based you can only get the shoes on apps that's how it is now and so they've made it harder and harder to get exclusive sneakers and you just pick them up at the stores um no on the apps they they re they just ship them to you oh i got gotcha. you yeah yeah you so just, so and so like what you said earlier the the friends and family only friends and family get those yeah yeah so pair the, or or and i hate to interrupt but i, I just want to ask my question or i'll forget it or anyone, they just call it friends and family, but they're limited release, and you better get them quick. Yeah, so friends and family pair, they try to get them into influencer hands. Like, you know, Travis, yeah, Travis Scott may send a pair to um, Kanye, and then you'll see him wearing a pair courtside before they release the, the public version. And the only difference between a friends and family pair and a pair that goes through Nike to let's say they make 30,000 pairs is the tag will say promo sample inside. And so, so my, what about an unreleased pair? 
Unreleased pairs, those do happen. What they, are they worth? D- loaded question. I mean, there's so many. Like, you know, a famous unreleased pair, like a Nike Yeezy One promo sample, you know, the um, the purple pair, you know, that's a couple hundred grand. See. <laughs> you definitely know shoes. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeezy Protocol 5. I, yeah. pref- I prefer the freaking Jordan Dunk. Well, Jordan, Dunks nobody wants, right? Jordan, uh, well, let me just correct you. So The Panda Dunks Panda, are all girls' shoes. Yes, dunk, that's like that's like the... So if we walk out of here and you see a dude wearing Dunks, Panda Dunks, what would you say? He, one, probably doesn't know the sneaker market <laughs> at all and just... just like so maybe but then two <laughs> that is a female shoe <laughs> yeah i'm gonna walk out and introduce you to somebody here <laughs> yeah you know where he got them probably sitting on the shelf me yeah they, yeah because i bought them because i like the shoe it's like hey those will go well and then someone said dude you don't want to wear those and yeah. i said why and he said because dude every teenage girl in the world has those number one yeah and number two you don't want to wear those and this guy was a sneakerhead so i just said pass i'm gonna take your word for it i don't want to look like a dork That's sure right. sure enough i was correct yeah well also jordan doesn't make dunks nike makes dunks jordan is its own separate i just wanted to help you there on your sneaker mm. knowledge knowledge well this turned into a sneakerhead conversation yeah now well, back back real quick to to uh sales ai yeah you want a company when you say mid-size are you looking for like certain size of uh, revenue, certain size of people, or is it important that they have inbound leads? Like yeah. uh, the people listening, do they know who they are listening, or do I got to like spell it out for people? No. Um, let me, let me break it down for you. It's pretty simple. If you have established inbound leads, so if you're running paid ads or you really good at SEO and you have a lot of people coming through your website, awesome fit. And you could be a smaller business that has that established, right? I know. So you just need inbound leads and and an established sales process. Sales process, ideally a fulfillment process so that we have opportunity to expand the the relationship into a customer service, but not a, not a must. It's also nice if the, if the user has a CRM they use, go high level HubSpot or Salesforce is like perfect. HubSpot is the top choice. But sales process, as you know, I got HubSpot. That's right. So, um, you know, inbound leads, CRM, sales process, ideally a customer fulfillment process. So have one of your people tell Lightspeed, because again, this is why I was asking. I hear what you're saying, but I don't know everywhere it applies. Like you should be able to come in here and say, Brad, if I own Lightspeed, mm-hmm. bro, I'd hire sales AI to go here, 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 and here. Well, I'll tell you here just so people can. Because like tech support, the, for hear, example, hear I don't know how to train AI to know how to answer a tech support call. But if I could, I'd have 24-hour tech support. It's AI, but it's 24-hour tech support. That's right. You got a problem? Boom, 24 hours. Right now, I got 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, <laughs> Pacific time. So how sales AI, let's just stick with the customer support example. And then I'm going to go back to how you can use it in, in life speed elsewhere. So customer support, do you have a set of FAQs? that like either on your website or a chat bot trained or, you know, a file like basic. Yeah. 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 So you would upload that to sales AI and then boom, the agent can answer every single FAQ in two to three minutes. Ready to go. So what a company could do then is have their manager write down and create FAQs if they don't already have them or because everyone has them. They just may not know them or go to chat GBT, put your website in and say, Hey, I need FAQs created. That's a simple task. That when you say put your website in, so I would put in www.lightspeedvt.com. Yeah. And, and then, then say, I need FAQs for this website. Yeah. And How will it know what frequently asked questions it, were? It'll do its best guess. Huh. So, but it'll give you a starting point and then you can add from there. Okay. So I'm thinking in my head, tech support line, 24 hours, customer care, just basic customer care uh, initiation, meaning you might get transferred to a real person, depending on what happens with this. That's I'd, right. I'd look at, I'd look at um, weeding out uh, leads because, mm-hmm. again, like I said, I have tons of leads, 
but we didn't work them properly and no yeah. one followed up and it was like manual shit. So I would say, Hey, here's 77,000 people that at one point in time inquired, but no one talked to them. Can they go mine those? Yeah. We can what would it do? Just big test blasts. And when they, is it true AI where if they, if someone responds, I don't have to have a canned response to everything. That's right. And, and let's say someone responds something off the rails. It'll put them back on track. I'll say, ha, oh, that was funny. Maybe even tell a joke back but then get them back to the the sales process that you're trying to get them through. How do we test it? You would give me a use case. So let's say inbound leads. I would then train on the um But you don't do questions. outbound. You don't prospect for me. But your inbound leads that are coming in, so contact forms or people that already opted in, we can go out. What about three years ago? We would need to run them back through a campaign to engage them again, right? Which we can do. You you have the level one consent. Hey, why don't you just come run light speed for 90 days and I'll make you some sort of deal and you can leverage all your tools and you can figure out if, how to make this place a billion dollars. If you gave me unrestricted access to run light speed, I would get you on a path to a billion dollars, hands down. What's Why would I restrict you? I, I don't know. Would if it be scary? Are you going to drive me backwards before I go forwards? I got to look at the data. It's a loaded question. That's another thing. Like there's so many companies out there that have data that they're not even looking at. That's right. Yeah. And that's one thing from a sales perspective. That's one thing we help automate looking at. We, we automatically report your top lead sources. We automatically report your top industries that you're closing. So what's that cost me roughly? So I say, okay, I'll sign up. Three grand a month. What is it? Uh, starts at seventeen fifty a month for all three. No, you're services. saying starts. See, there's the keyword. What What do I need based on what you just said? Uh, you need a baseline use cases, which we have, and then we give you an allotted amount of text messages and and talk minutes in the basic package. But if you soar past it, we're going to contact you and bump your subscription so that you're not getting nailed every day for charges. Yeah. Because it is a. Well, I'll make is. your trip worthwhile. I'll be a, the last beta for you. Okay. All right. Because, we'll again, I mean, there. I really do have 77,000 leads. They're just sitting there. And I don't know how old they are. But, like, well, if, remember, if, if if someone could just blast out and start that conversation again, and if they reply, da 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 da, and how it goes and what happens, I don't know. And again, I don't want to get involved with that. I want sales AI to think think it up for me. Yeah. And that's the value. I'm saying, like, that's valuable just by itself. Because like I could use Chat GPT for the same thing, it may not be as good, mm -hmm. but Chat GPT ain't gonna come in here and say, "Bro, you need to do this for that department, this for that department, use this for that department." Put those two together. Let Sales AI implement this program, and all that right there is you know, eliminated, saving you money, and the results will skyrocket. That's what I'm looking for is like a blueprint. Yeah, and and that is what we do with our customer success and our product combined is we give you that blueprint and we execute. Mm. And remember. I helped rebuild your help spot a couple of years ago. So I'm familiar with you. Yeah, it's been fucked up ever since. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, again, but you see how uninvolved I was. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need, that's why I'm still not a billion dollar company because we, like, to me, it's like, you know, I, I want somebody like sales AI to come in here and just like go, man, if this is my company, did I, I deploy it here, 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 and here, Brad, this is what it costs. And then I go, all right, worst case scenario, I lose X amount of dollars. Let's try it. Like, that's what I want to do. And then, holy shit, it worked. I don't want to have to think it all up. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. Don't, how the hell do I know? Yeah, you don't know uh, what you don't know. And not and, only that, there's a million why... businesses listening that they're going to keep doing it their way. They're not calling you. Well, dude, they don't realize that if, if they don't hurry up and either get into it themselves or start leveraging and using people that are, they're going to be out of business. They are 100%. You're going to be out of business. Larry Fink is said he will never stop buying basically data centers mm -hmm. for more AI learning. Like dude, it's there's data centers being bought up for all the money. Their AI is growing and it's going to take over the planet. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to use it, you're done. That's right. You, you got to wake up now. If you're asleep at the wheel, wake up. All right. Well, I'm going to have you back on another episode in the future. Mm -hmm. So we can answer all the questions that this episode is going to freaking muster up <laughs> folks hit him up with the bomb squad. Again, I don't get any 
tell him I don't get anything. No, it's not. It's not. So I can make a commission. It's so he knows I got more influence than a pickle. So if you could <laughs> blow his ass up on social media, go blow up sales, AI.com half, half of you guys should be implementing this shit. And, uh, as always in the future, keep it real. Thanks for coming, buddy. Thanks buddy.